everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here then welcome. I really hope you enjoy your first video. So today's video is going to be a video all about the house buying process and if you've been here a little while now you'll know that I have done a video on this but it was quite a long time ago so I just wanted to do a little bit of an updated version and today's video is going to be focusing just on new builds. So what it's like to buy a new build house. I actually got mine via the help to buy equity loan scheme so if you're looking to use this scheme as well then this video is also going to apply to you but if you're just buying a new build and not using any of the help to buy schemes then this is also the process that you're going to have to follow as well so the developer that I use was Red Row but the developer you use will pretty much follow a very similar process so let's go right into the video if you haven't followed me on Instagram though it's at Hazelwood X and if you want to help suggest any future video topics then be sure to follow me on there because I'm always taking my suggestions from you guys and bringing you videos that I know you actually want to see so so without waffling let's get into it so okay so the first step when buying a new build house is obviously finding the house that you want to buy so my first step was looking onto Google I would just type in new build developments in and then the area that I was looking in so it's really key to find out what developments are available just to have a little look at all the developments just to make sure that you're buying at one that you definitely like because every house developer out there is different and there's definitely some developers that I prefer over others I wouldn't want to sit here now and slay to new developers as such because that's obviously not what I'm here for but the people that I definitely prefer are Red Row who I bought with I think they do really really good quality houses I also like David Wilson Homes and I also like Charles Church the other developer I really like is called Bloor Homes as well. So they're my top developers personally. There's some out there that aren't as great. Some aren't rated that highly, but I'd, I'll leave it down to you guys to do your own research on the developer that you're using. There's lots of websites out there with reviews. You will find bad reviews on every developer. So don't let negative reviews put you off too much. What I would say is go to the development yourself, have a look at the show homes, have a look at the builds and see what you think yourself, because it's important that you're comfortable with it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks so much but do your research is my first major piece of advice so yes so I did have a look around at a couple of different developments over the years leading up to buying my house and just to get a feel for the sort of development that I wanted to purchase at so once you find the development there's then two different types of purchase one is called off plan and then the second is just going to be reserving a plot that is already built or is in preparation so buying off plan is what I did and it's actually when the plot has not been built yet and you're literally looking at floor plans and you're making a decision based on something you cannot physically see and I had no problem with this whatsoever I liked the look of the floor plans I had gone and seen various show homes not of the plot that I was buying but similar sort of styles and I just liked the look of them so I was quite comfortable to reserve off plan not everyone is and that's okay it's totally down to you and what you're comfortable with some people like to see the plot is already up some plots you reserve kind of midway through the build when they're half built and you still can't go and view them other ones are mainly built so you can go in and view them they might be at say carpet laying stage and you're going and viewing them just just before they're ready to you know complete or some will be completely built and ready for you to move into a week down the line so it just depends on the stage your developers at but do have a look at the plots available on their website and have a chat with them and see where they are in the process. So what you do is you either reserve off plan or you reserve a plot that is ready or being built currently and the process for that is obviously going to the developer, having a chat about the particular build you want to go for and then what they'll do is they'll run through a checklist with you every developer has a different checklist but it's basically just talking you through things such as the whole site they'll talk you through how big the development's going to be that kind of thing they'll talk you through where any affordable houses are going to be they'll talk you through loads and loads of different things regarding that property so you understand exactly and to make sure that you make an informed decision if you want to definitely proceed with that particular plot so if you're comfortable with everything they tell you you then reserve the plot and when you reserve a plot there is a reservation fee that fee depends on the developer you're going with or the route you're going down so with help to buy I personally had a higher reservation fee versus someone that wasn't using help to buy so I believe mine was 500 pounds but people that wasn't using help to buy only had a 250 pound reservation fee don't ask me why that's just down to what the developer decided so before reserving the plot I had to undergo a mortgage affordability check and that was just literally running through my income and my expenditure on the phone with the mortgage broker which Red Row had actually suggested to me it was free 
of charge and that's just basically a kind of yes or no decision as to whether I could afford to go ahead and they confirmed to Red Row that I could so then Red Row let me pay that reservation fee so that the plot was mine so after reserving the plot you then have to go through the proper mortgage process and that is to obtain a decision in principle and that is actually getting a lender to offer you a mortgage um, it's not your formal mortgage offer it's just a decision in principle and um, it's basically saying based on these factors I, we will lend this person this money and um, your formal mortgage offer comes later down the line so I have my decision in principle and that just involved a mortgage broker coming to me going through all my facts and figures taking id from me taking bank statements lots and lots of different documents and i've done a video all about that i'll link it down below as well about the mortgage process um and yeah that was another free service as well that was offered through Red Row developers. Most developers will have a free mortgage service available. They should tell you about this already, but do ask them if they haven't. So that is exactly what I did, went through the process. It took about two working days and I had my decision in principle already. So I was happy, you know, it was definitely in writing confirmed that this is okay and she can go ahead. I was feeling all great about it. And the next step is then obtaining a solicitor. And again, Red Row had referred me to a solicitor that they were using and if I use a solicitor there was a legal contribution from Red Row so they actually paid a thousand pounds towards my legal fees which was great and again ask a developer if this is available through them everyone is different but sometimes there are incentives such as a thousand pounds towards legal fees which I really found helpful of course so I found my solicitor and appointed them and they do actually often ask you for a fee up front so I had to pay them around 500 pounds up front before they would undertake any work for me and there wasn't really too much work they had to undertake at the beginning because when I reserved my plot, I had to wait around five or six months for the property to be built. So there was quite a lot of time to get everything ready and in place and it wasn't a rush at all. Whereas if you're buying a property that's actually already built, your process is gonna go a hell of a lot quicker than mine did. So do bear that in mind. But my process was quite slow and steady because we all had lots and lots of time to get everything ready and done. So there was no rush, no pressure from anyone. It was quite a nice, slow, easy, Easy process for me and that is actually why I quite liked buying off plan because it did give me a lot of time to get everything ready and there was no rush or anything like that so yes once you've appointed your solicitor they'll make you complete a few forms this will be such as their terms of business basically you agreeing that you're gonna pay them that fee at the end and yeah just taking the fee from you to kind of like reserve it's basically an upfront fee for their services so they have they hold that on account to use when they do undertake work for you so during that process, the solicitors had a couple of little bits and pieces to undertake. But one thing I did have to do within six weeks of reserving my property was to exchange contracts. So that was the only real thing that had to happen until right at the end of the process when the property was built. So exchanging contracts is basically when you're kind of legally bound to purchase that property, I guess. So your solicitor is involved in exchanging contracts for you and they pretty much do all of the work for you. They may send you a couple of documents and ask you to sign them and that is basically it. So there really isn't much at all you need to do other than read the documents, make sure you understand them and sign them. Not everyone understands that most people just sign them anyway, but I'd always suggest to sign, to, you know, have a read of the documents you're signing because you don't want to sign your life away without knowing what you're signing, but you know, most people don't. Um, so you exchange contracts and that's just basically the legal agreement to say, yep, Hazelwood is buying this property, Red Row is selling it to her, etc., etc. So that's quite an easy process to go through, nothing too difficult. And then after that, yeah, nothing really happened at all from exchanging contracts right until the end. And then Red Row then said, right, we're gonna, we're looking to serve notice that the plot is gonna be ready really soon. And they basically serve notice of completion um, and then you have two weeks to complete on the property. So Red Row got in contact with me and said, Hazel, right, the property's actually ready now. Um, it was ready earlier than they expected it to be ready. So, so they did give me the option to actually wait until notice was served. And that would mean that I could wait another month or so until I wanted to go ahead with completing on that property, which means officially buying it. But I said, no, I wanna go ahead now. I can't wait to get the keys on my property. So they then serve notice of completion. And then I think that's the, le I'm not actually sure of the legal term, but it's something like that. I know they said it, said to me that it was serving notice. Um, so 
they then got in contact with my solicitor, the solicitor then contacted me and said, right Hazel, it's now time to pay your deposit for the house. So then they asked me for the deposit amount and then I sent that figure to them and then that was two weeks before I moved into the property. So that was two weeks before completion. So you send them the money and then you give them two weeks to complete all their paperwork. This can happen quicker, but they are allowed up to two weeks or 10 working days for completion. At least they were when I completed with my property, which was only 18 months ago. So I'm sure rules haven't changed since then. So yeah, at that point, I then basically waited the two weeks and during them two weeks, they were just tying everything up at their end. Any final pieces of paperwork they needed to complete. They might have sent me a few forms that I had to sign in that period, but there really wasn't much for me to do at all. That is why you appoint your solicitor because they do everything for you. And at the end of the two weeks, you then get a call on the day of completion and on the day of completion, you don't actually know <laughs> when you're gonna get the keys. So it totally depends because your bank lender who is offering you the mortgage has to send the funds to your solicitor and the solicitor then have to tie up them funds with the property transaction. They have to complete the transaction, let Red Row know that it's happened and send them the funds as well. So there's quite a lot of steps to go through. So on the day of completion, don't expect it to happen at a particular time. It could happen anywhere between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. or even later if your solicitor works later than 5 p.m. So you could be waiting around all day for your phone call to say, yep, yeah, it's all gone through, you've completed, you have your house, it's all done and dusted. Um, I think I completed around 12.30 in the afternoon. So mine was quite a relatively early completion, but I know some people completed a lot later on my development. It just depends how busy they are that day and what's going on and how quick your sister is really. So yeah, don't expect anything too much from that. The only other thing I can think of, which I haven't explained in this, um, that I haven't explained in this video is regarding options. So when you buy a new build, if you have reserved a brand new plot, you also get to decide on your flooring, your bathroom, your kitchen, etc. So if your if your plot has not been built yet, or if it's at a certain point in the build where by the options have not been completed yet, you get to decide everything, which is obviously great. And typically they let you start picking them after you've exchanged contracts. And then there is gonna be a deadline for when they have to be picked because they obviously need them choices made at a certain point so that they can put them into the house. So check that with your developer, ask them, can I still make the options or have they been chosen already? And that is just gonna be, you know, like I said, decisions on the ha um, decisions on the kitchen, the bathroom, etc. This is also going to be if you want to buy anything extra for your house as well. So sometimes you can upgrade things. You could upgrade your wardrobe. I upgraded mine to a mirror wardrobe. You can buy more plugs. There's loads and loads of different options available. Every developer is different. So do check it out. They will tell you about it anyway. Um, so don't worry about that. They'll definitely inform you. But it's worth asking them if they haven't let you know yet or if you're intrigued about it. Also, if you are buying a house, make sure turf is included because not all developments include turf. So that is something you need to think about. So, so that is basically the house buying process that I went through with a new build. In terms of help by equity loan, again, there really wasn't much else I had to do at all. There was an extra form I had to complete and there was a few extra forms that the solicitor had to complete for me. And again, they did it all for me. They sent it across to me and I had to sign. So there was nothing really massively different that I had to do. They did all the work for me. They were paid the work. They were paid for the work and the fee that I had to pay them was slightly higher. I've done a video all about the legal fees that I incurred as well, which I'll also link below if you're interested in watching that, just so you can find out exactly what it costs me to purchase a new build house. I really hope this video was helpful, guys. I really hope it helped any of you out who are currently going through the process of buying a new build property. Best of luck for any of you that are out there looking to buy your first house. I hope it goes smoothly for you and I wish you all the success and thank you so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button down below and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye guys!